Welcome to the Way to Go podcast. I'm Bill McMinn. Along with me is Mark Hostetler talking about the book, The Seven Daily Sins, which I hold in my hand right now, Mark, as we speak. Deadly Sins. Written by Dr. James Stalker. And I love it. You all know, I've been listening to these podcasts. I love the name Stalker. <laughs> yeah. Hey. It's creepy. It's, here comes the Stalker family. <laughs> the whole family of Stalkers. Yeah. But yeah, written in 1901, I, there's a lot of wisdom, and I appreciate reading it because I think any author that you read anyway kind of brings a different perspective on things Absolutely. and helps to open your mind and heart to things that maybe you wouldn't have thought of, mm-hmm. uh, gives you, uh, broadens your horizon, so to speak. And the deadly sin that we're talking about today is anger. And the first place that he starts off in his book, and it is a reality, is anger is not always wrong. In Ephesians 4, 26, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. It doesn't say anger is a sin. It says, in your anger, do not sin. Yeah. So what do you think about that? Well, I mean, I think anger is a feeling. It's an emotion. Mm -hmm. And feelings aren't right or wrong. They just are. Right. Right. I can't do anything if I'm feeling angry. I can't do anything about that. I mean, right. I'm just feeling angry. Right. Now I got to process it. I got to think through it. But I love how the Bible gives us permission to be angry. Just don't let it lead you to sin. Right. It says of the Lord himself that he gets angry. Well, God doesn't sin. Right. You know, he, he's able to balance anger with justice and love and grace all at the same time. Well, me and you should be able to do the same thing, right? right. It's just a feeling. It's not right or wrong. It's just a feeling. Now, where you go with that feeling will determine whether it's right or wrong. Or I, well, let's let's admit some of the things that we get angry about are stupid. Absolutely. We got we we yeah. we had a we had a feeling <laughs> of anger over something not worth being. Well, having a feeling about <laughs> because yeah. it was traffic or it was a kid spilled the milk or something else. So, I mean, I do agree with you hundred percent. Anger is a feeling. The feeling isn't wrong, but sometimes we are petty and we get angry about things we shouldn't be getting angry about. But here's what he says. Here's a quote. Okay. Mm-hmm. It is, in fact, a kind of military equipment provided by nature, meaning God, to repel wrong and to avenge injustice. It is not in and of itself sinful. And when I think about the kind of anger that might propel me or defend me, it's somebody's hurting my kids. Oh, man. There's righteous anger. That's what it's called. What would, right? let, me, let me ask you something. What would you do if somebody laid their hands on your kid in a way that they should not do it? Well, I shudder to think. Being, Honestly, right. I shudder to think about it. But I... I, I I'm going to protect him, right? No matter what. What they about will what, be what about in the Bible? The story of Dinah goes to Shechem mm-hmm. to visit the young ladies, not the young men. Gets raped by the man named Shechem. It's and those yeah. brothers. I'm not, listen. I'm not saying the penalty fit the crime because they went and basically started a war and annihilated every man in the in the town. I'm not saying that their the reaction of Levi and Simeon was appropriate because one man raped your daughter, not the whole town. However, we don't know what the town was like. We're not sure what all was going on there. Right. We just know those men were justifiably ticked. And as they said, when the dad barked about what they did and how they handled it, they said, should, they, should that man have treated our sister like a prostitute? No. no. Somebody touched my kids sexually. Somebody I'm molested my kids yeah. sexually. I'm telling you, the cops better be to them first. Yeah. Because to and, me, this is a righteous anger. This is something I will protect. I remember nothing lit a fire under me when I was a teenager more than someone touching one of my brothers. Yeah. You wanted to make me really upset? You go start picking on one of my brothers. And man, when that was my blood you were picking on, my blood was boiling at that yeah. point. And even instantly. listening and even listening to this right now, some of you uh, may have actually experienced that in your life. And you don't know what to do with that anger. You don't right. know how to process it. I just want to encourage you. We're here for you. We can help you process that anger if you ever if you ever need that. It is a real thing. Right. I mean, that anger you're feeling, I, when you're talking, I'm feeling it. I'm getting right. riled up right now. I right. can't imagine. Thank the Lord, by his grace, I haven't had to do that with my children. I haven't right. had to go through that. Some who are listening right now even have had to do that. And we're not trying to dismiss anger. Anger's real. Right. I mean, this is, this is something right. that we got to deal with here. Right. You know? Now, I had a young, there was a young man when my daughter first went to school, to junior high school, one of her first weeks there. And he basically propositioned my seventh grade daughter mm. for sexual favors. And my older daughter heard it. 
Now, my older daughter wanted to tear the kid apart. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I knew about it was because of him. Now, I didn't go ballistic. I didn't. I never asked the kid's name. I didn't yell or scream at anyone. I just calmly went to the school. I was upset about it. I told him what happened. Told him, I expect you to get in here and put the fear of God in that kid. And I expect that he will not ever say that again to my daughter. And, he, and they did. And he didn't. And that was the end of it. You know what I'm saying? But that's the kind of stuff where, yeah, I didn't come unglued because, you know, of his words to my daughter. I just, you know, explained to my daughter how to, how to talk with her. And I just went and I dealt with it as a mm -hmm. school level. It was very, you know, I would say that I handled it very appropriately. Yeah. I had a right. Guess what? They were upset about it, too. Absolutely. So were they upset about yeah. it? I mean, they were just like, they understood right. what it was to be a parent. Right. They understood why as a parent would be upset. They mm -hmm. also under, they also appreciated the fact that I wasn't blaming them for it. Yeah. That and I understood they didn't do it, and I just needed to talk calmly to them. Absolutely. Right. And what I like about what you're saying there, Bill, is, is that you responded to the situation. I think too many times we end up reacting Amen. to a situation. Right. And and it makes the anger worse. It just expounds the situation, right. you know, and... and we have to learn how to control that anger. It's 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 self control, right? Right. And we have to learn how to take time, breathe deep. All right. Now, how can I respond in a God honoring way using this anger to propel it? Right. Use it. You have permission to be angry. Right. Just don't sin. Right. You know. So be be careful how you respond with your anger. Right. Anger is a huge thing for me. Uh, before before I returned to Christ, this was one of the hardest things for me uh, to get a hold of in my life. I was an angry mess right. all the time. My temper was horrible, you know, right. and I hurt things. I hurt a lot of people, right? And and I hurt uh, property, right? And it was not good. Did and, um was it productive? No, not <laughs> right, at all. Exactly, not at all. It actually ended up hurting more than anything. Well, you know? not and, that I'm ready to jump into this point, but I will say it now. Listen, anger is between your left ear and your right ear. And a lot of times we're angry is because our, our goals were blocked. And I wanted to get somewhere in five minutes. Someone pulled out in front of me. Now it's going to be six. Yeah. And I'll forget about it <laughs> because my goal got blocked. And the thing is, we arbitrarily, we arbitrarily make goals that mm -hmm. we could change. No one, it's not in the Bible. It's just we said we needed to get there in five minutes. Well, once I learned to say, well, you could say six minutes then I was fine. It's like us today. We're doing a podcast at, well, let's see, what time is it now, Mark? It's almost three. Right now we're doing the podcast. Uh, yeah. He wanted to do it at 930 this morning. I think you have been setting up this whole day so I can talk <laughs> through this. <laughs> this was not Mark's plan today. Oh, man. But it was okay because like I... Like I told you, I'm like, hey, I'm just not, I'm not feeling it right now. I feel like we would be rushed. I wouldn't have had a chance really to pray about this. I wouldn't have had a chance really to think through it. You know, I'd rather just wait and, and maybe just, and I'll change your focus because you're so goal oriented and I'm goal oriented. Yeah. And that's why we get angry is because we're, we're so goal, goal oriented that something blocks it. We become frustrated. Now this could be, I expected my wife to write back. I asked her to bring me a drink and she forgot. And I, I'm, expe I'm expecting this. Yeah. Look, some of these expectations can be changed. That's right. And our frustrations yeah, would go down. Because, again, point, these, yeah. are, these are thinking issues. Another thing, too, and I think he brings it up really well, sometimes we have a temper about stuff we don't really need to have a temper about. So, in other words, we have temper. And he said that this is a, like a real thing for people. Like he just called it, he just calls it, a, it's a temper. Yeah. You have a temperament yep. to get angry. You have a tendency all the time to be angry about things. Mm -hmm. And he said, and you got to calm yourself down on that too. Yeah. I, I love uh, the, the new English translation Bible and how it says Proverbs 29, 11, it says a fool lets fly with all his temper, right? But a wise person keeps it back. Yeah, great. You know, great verse. I think, I think yeah. that's an awesome verse. Uh, because I've seen the negative realities of letting fly with all of my temper, you know, and, and afterwards you go, holy cow, yeah. I can't believe that happened. Right. It can change your life. You can go to zero to a hundred. Right. Like that. And, and all of a sudden your whole life's different. Right. Because you, now there's a consequence to what you just did back yeah. here. You know? and, and, and fire, and, fire those words out of the muzzle of your mouth and you're yeah. not getting them back. You like them once back. you say something, that's why you got to calm yourself down. And yeah. he does make some points about that later. Listen, count to 20, walk away, let him know you're upset. You just need some time to chill down. 
better that than you know have a bunch of, of regrets and things like Absolutely. that yeah. but um, but I, I appreciate you know what you're saying and i think too at times we just have to adjust our schedule we have to not get it bit out of shape we have yeah. to be okay with it because you know uh, accepting sometimes the lord has a different path for us at that moment but anger he said is sin when it's directed against the wrong objects the legitimate objects of anger are injustice and folly but it may be provoked by the opposite objects and sometimes we get angry and and that like somebody might get angry that they got caught or angry that they were corrected. We shouldn't be angry that someone gave you constructive criticism. You shouldn't be angry that a friend said, Hey, this is, this is something. Now we were talking earlier. We got uh, one thing, our uh, youth pastor, you know, brought something to my attention that came from a local bank. And it was a message in the flyer that we did not agree with Mm -hmm. at this late state, late date in a pandemic where we are, uh, you know, in a mode of coming to the end, probably mass mandate is going to be lifted in the next couple of months. Uh, over 40% of our state vaccinated. A lot of other people have had it. I mean, we're going to be pushing toward herd immunity and mm-hmm. not, not too long off. So why are we telling people to stay home now? Yeah. So my wife, she went to the bank and she had a conversation, nice conversation with them. But I think that to me was responding to it. She's not yeah. yelling and screaming. Yeah. She's not, she's just letting them know, Hey, were you guys aware of this? They were not aware of it actually. So, I mean, that made me feel a little bit better. Yeah. It just came from maybe another company slipped that in and they just didn't catch it, whatever. It's not really the message they were sending or didn't actually represent them. You know, clearly mm-hmm. it was good for her to go clarify that because sometimes yeah. too, we might get upset about something and not really clarify, exactly. Hey, was that what you meant to say? Uh, that's all that has to happen. Right. Right. happens so many times in our counseling sessions bill i mean i don't know if you do this but it's it's like hey here's an here's a, t- a communication exercise so what i heard you saying before i start to i walk away you know what i mean and i and i and i misunderstood what you say i want to give you the opportunity to clarify hey so what i heard you saying is and you tell them what you heard so right. many times it's like no that's not what i said at all right you just heard it with those ears you know right. that's why james tells us be slow to anger Quick to listen, slow to anger. Right, right. Don't 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 get caught up in in misjudging or or misinterpreting somebody. Walk away angry, yeah. and, um, and all of a sudden I, I you're in right. a whole different so, disposition. Sometimes too. I mean, I've had my wife literally. This is like for real stuff. She's angry at something. I didn't even say it. <laughs> She misheard it. Right. And so it's good to clarify that. Uh, my son actually was pretty upset with me um, just recently. Totally misheard what i was saying in fact he was so upset he he leaves and and i just told him like dude i wasn't even talking to you like i'm not even sure i mean i'm not saying that if i would have said what he thought that he wouldn't have had a right to be upset you know what i'm saying i'm not saying that i'm just saying sometimes you get in trouble for something but i didn't say it so before you go off half cock maybe you just need to clarify hey did i really hear you right yeah is that yeah, really what a, you meant to great, say? It's a great you're, thing but to you're do. you're bringing yeah. it into play, and I you know I appreciate that, but Mark. Bill, I, I just want to say one more thing about anger. This has been my life experiences. Well, listen, uh, so, we have we have seven more minutes left. I hope you have more than one thing to say. Yeah, okay, yeah, I hope it's on more I than one. So. I'm just saying. I think so, so what I what I um, what I had a hard time with is is processing emotions. I think too many times I didn't know, uh, and other people don't know how to name an emotion. So I was either happy or angry. Anything in between, I didn't care. What about hungry? I'm either happy or angry, you know, feeling-wise. Right. You know what I'm saying? Well, underneath that, and that anger is a surface-level thing. There's something underneath right. it, a root of bitterness or a root of something else causing this surface thing of anger to come out. But we don't know how to name that interior oh. uh, emotion, like frustration because I feel misjudged. Okay. That makes me angry. Okay. Okay. Um, like, uh, being mistreated. Okay. If if I hear Mark, if I hear what you're saying, (laughs) yeah, give me a therapy lesson here. Yeah. Yeah. If I hear what you're saying, what you're saying is sometimes you're angry and you haven't really thought about why. Exactly. And sometimes the anger is not like you properly identified the, the feeling, but not the source. And sometimes the anger is coming because we have an unmet expectation that maybe we didn't need to have, or our goals got blocked, or maybe we're just being dumb. Okay. Mm -hmm. And because, and we got inconvenienced. Listen, there, there was a day and I'll be honest about this. I would fly off the handle if I got an inconvenience, I'd break stuff. Like, I mean, I've, I'm not proud of it, but, and, and all the time, no, I can think of one, two, three times Mm -hmm. in, 36 years of marriage, or maybe I, I probably say my whole life 
that I actually busted something. Yeah. Most times it was mine. Okay, it's right. my thing that I, I heard, call them a, a zero to a hundred moment. Yeah, where and I'm, I'm here, and all of a sudden I'm <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna tell you what, you know? it was wrong, yeah, and, and and it was wrong because there was no good reason for it. Mm-hmm. There was a, well, I remember the one time specifically, it was a stupid thing, and you know the fact of the matter is today, I would that kind of thing would never make me angry today. Now, something? yeah, wow. I think part of it, like, and what he says in the book is sometimes people mellow out with age as part of it, but I think that's a hopeless thing to say, because I don't want to say to a young person, hey, listen, if you're 25 right now and I have an anger issue, just know by the time you're 45, you won't. I don't think that's the message. I think no. the message is, no, you can control it. You can, because yeah. if you can be on the phone, look, here's how it is. If you can be on the phone and, you know, or the phone rings, you've just been yelling at the kids. What are you doing? Pick up your phone. Mm-hmm. You pick up the phone. Hey, hey how, you how doing? are you? <laughs> yeah. That shows control. Mm-hmm. All right. You could be just as controlled with those kids. You could be on that's that phone exactly right then. Right. right. That's yeah. fact. I love that. And, and the other thing I wanted to bring up too on that is, uh, uh, Jonah, Jonah's anger. Oh, you remember that when yes, God asked him that question? Fantastic he's, question. He's like, is it right for you to be this angry? Right. God asked Jonah. He, he, what a haunting Do you have question, a right? You know? Do you have the right to be right. angry about this? Honestly. You know? No. <laughs> it's like, man, whew, if I could just hear God's voice say that to me when I'm, when I'm going from zero to 100 in that time, you know, if I could just hear God say, hey, Mark, is it right for you to be angry right now? Think about what you're angry about. What you mentioned early on in this show, my children being abused or mistreated, you know? Yes. Uh, um, right. Political things that are happening right. right now that we don't agree with at all. Someone's I trying to seduce your wife. Yeah, I think there mad. is right. definite righteous anger. And if God was asking me that right then, I might say, yes, Lord, I, I think it's right because you're angry about that. Right. Well, Moses yes. broke the Ten Commandments, the original copy, and Why? that was not a problem. Why? Because of the sin of the people. Yeah. Because they made a golden calf. Because they were already abandoning God when he was up getting the laws for the people yeah. to bridge them to God. I mean, part of the law was about bridging people to God. They're already walking away from him. So there are times when it's right to be angry. But to be honest, when I think back to the my biggest boiling points, let's put it this way, where I was more volcanic than at mm-hmm. other times. You know, mm-hmm. Sometimes mm-hmm. you're angry and it, it's just like simmering rice. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes it's like, a volcano mm-hmm. just went off. In the volcanic times, you know, if God would say, do you have a right to be angry about this? If so, maybe not that angry. Right. You know what I'm saying? Maybe right. maybe I've not lost, like that. Maybe control. I shouldn't say, yeah. oh, yeah, you, right. I, you don't right. want to lose control. Yeah. No, and, and again, and I'm not, I wouldn't describe myself at all as an angry person. I wouldn't even describe myself as an impatient person. But I have been angry. And I do get angry at times. And I used to be a lot angrier before I started realizing, Bill, you have to change your goals. But let me read this before we, and we'll come back. We will come back. Mark and I will come back to this topic because I think it really is important. We're not going to finish this all today. But here's here's what uh, Stalker says on pride. He said, pride and selfishness make demands that are thoroughly unjust and wax angry with everyone who does not concede them. I thought, what a brilliant statement. You are making selfish demands, and that would really mean expectations. I expect you to uh, communicate with me at this pace. I expect you to uh, know that I needed you to say I love you today. I expected you to think like I do. And I'm just throwing some out there Mm -hmm. just for sake of argument. Pride and selfishness make demands that are thoroughly unjust and wax angry with everyone who does not concede them. Our sense of our own merits and rights is generally far in excess of our sense of the corresponding claims of others and hence arises strife. Now, I realize that language is written in 1901. So it bears some thought. Our sense of our own merits and rights, in other words, what I have a right to, is generally way, way and far in excess of our sense of the corresponding claims of others. In other words, I think I have a right to expect you to do something, right. but I don't think you should have that right to expect something right. else from me. That's right. You know what I'm saying? It's just pride and selfishness. I thought, Mark, that this is me, what. honestly. I, this is me sometimes, Mark. Really right, is. this is how I am. It takes I me- have expectations on people, and I'm getting ticked that they don't match my expectation where I didn't have a right to have the expectation in the first place. That's exactly right. You, you're... You're going through a sermon series right now through Philippians, and it takes me right, right back to Philippians 2, right back to where it says, do nothing out of selfish ambition, but in everything consider others above yourself. And then it tells us how Jesus Christ himself gave us the example, right. lowering, if anybody had a right, 
you know, to anything in this life, it's Jesus Christ. Right. And he considered himself lower than right. God. You know what I'm saying? And even to the point of death on a cross for me and you and for everybody that's Maybe listening. Maybe we should you know? expect, Mark, not to be... I hate to say the word honor because I don't think we really use that. Honor me. You better honor me. I right. don't think in those terms really, right. but... Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I just think we have expectations sometimes that, like Jesus Christ said, when you come to a room, sit at the back table. Let them bring you up. Yeah. Don't always expect to be treated like you're the most important person. Maybe that's, that's what exactly we're saying right. here, that's is exactly I should right. not expect to be treated by other people like I'm the most important person. I should be expected, I should expect to be treated like right. I'm not that important. Here's, here's what I would say in response to that. So, Anger comes from frustration a lot of times. Yes, frustration definitely. is when expectation doesn't match reality. Correct. Correct. And so and so when reality is is you're really not the big dog in this house. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, you're going to be really frustrated. It's going to come come across angry because you just been smacked in the face with the reality of who you really are. Don't think more highly of yourself than you ought. Right. That's what the scripture says. And have less expectations and you'll be less angry. There's, yeah. there's a lot more to talk about there on this is. topic. Yeah. And if you have questions, like Mark said, you know, we're here for you. You can always contact us. A lot of you who listen to the show know us already. Mm -hmm. uh, for those who don't, you can always contact the church. Just email us. Uh, find out. Say, hey, you know, I kind of need help with this, or come see us. You know, we're here for you. Uh, we. Yeah. Let, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna have Mark close in prayer and just pray about this issue. Yeah. And uh, before we close the show, uh, Mark. Father God, thank you so much uh, that you have given us hope and you've given us access to uh, overcoming hurts, habits, and hangups in our life. And sometimes, Lord. Some of us really battle with the hang-up of anger and a, and, a, and a hot temper, Lord. And so I pray for anybody that's listening right now, if they are having a hard time processing anger and they're taking it out, maybe even abusing people around them, Lord God, would you just give them your spirit and your grace to be able to overcome this habit, uh, bring them to celebrate recovery, Lord, you know, or whatever, uh, help, uh, help them to contact us as pastors, but to just give them that access to freedom from this uh, vice, really. It's just a vice. So Holy Spirit, speak now. Uh, we trust that you're doing a great thing with this episode. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have a blessed week.